I'm not a great fan of using microscopes because you're hunched over. You've got a focus wheel so you can only see one part of the insect in focus at a time. I've been shooting this kind of high magnification photography for over 10, maybe 12 years now. With my images, you've got a three metre print on the wall in perfect clarity, perfect focus from front to back. If we want to educate the public about this issue, then we have to be able to show them certain specimens that it has affected in the most dramatic way. The latest project is called Extinct and Endangered, and it focuses on insect decline and biodiversity loss. It's in collaboration with the American Museum of Natural History in New York, and all the specimens for the project actually come from their collections. Insect decline, biodiversity loss is a huge subject within their field. So from their point of view, you know, anything they can do to, to highlight this issue um, was always going to be a good thing for them. It took three years to produce, um, two years to shoot full time. And essentially I photographed 40 specimens from their collection in that time. They range from being extinct, already gone from this planet, to you know, severely threatened, but also some where they've come back from what we thought was extinction and they're now in breeding programs. Photo stacking is the process that I use. Generally over 10,000 separate shots is required to, to shoot them. I take about three weeks each to create. At the end of it, you know, you can see every tiny ridge, hair on the specimen. The American Museum of Natural History, I think they've got something like 20 million specimens, insect specimens and you're opening boxes that possibly haven't been opened for decades and decades and decades. There's so much time and energy and effort that has gone into creating these collections from, from hundreds and thousands of people from all over the world. You know, because it's not possible for the museum essentially to show the public all the specimens in the collection. So if I can be, be the bridge between the two and enable the museum to celebrate their collections and the public to consume their collections in a different way then you know that makes my job you know personally I find it quite worthwhile and it's a project that I've had in mind for so, quite some time because I think you know if, you, if you've got a certain skill set like I have where I can communicate via imagery and pictures then it makes sense that you use that skill set for a good purpose when you're photographing something that is extinct and you're you've got this insect on a pin and you understand that that creature is, is never going to fly again. It's quite a humbling experience, primarily as well because it is a, of human activity, whether that's pesticide use, loss of habitat, aggressive agriculture, climate change. You know, because of us, that thing's not going to, not going to be flying anymore. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing to get your head around. I kind of started to think more and more about, it was not just a project about insects, but about humans as well. Because I don't think the general population, the general public, is, is really that aware of how much we as humans need insects to survive. And it's as simple as that, we need insects to survive. There's, there's a whole range in there, specimens that, you know, most people will, will recognise. You know, for example, there's a nine-spotted ladybug. I like seeing people look at that image in the exhibitions because it jars them a little bit. It makes them question, well, why am I looking at this in a exhibition about insect decline. I think, you know, if people are familiar with something, the idea that it may not be there forever is, is an unpleasant thought. Therefore, you, you know, it should capture their attention. Like the, the giant Patagonian bumblebee, which is one of my favorite images. I shot it from the underside, so the, the, the bees kind of looking straight at you. And I think it's quite an arresting image. You don't normally see bees photographed that way. They're, they're usually from the sides, so you get all the wings and everything like that. So I always look at my images first and foremost as being educational tools. That is their purpose. If you can look at it and you want it on your wall in your living room to enjoy it visually, that's wonderful, that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. But I would prefer the images to be used in schools or in museums um, where people can, can learn about the subject matter that I'm shooting. Insect decline is something that is, you know, is current, is now, and it's, it's in my opinion, underreported. But the ramifications of insect decline for humans in general is, is quite significant. 